Welcome to another episode of Get Wisdom. I'm Brian Kelly, along with Get Wisdom founder and director, Carl Mollison. This week, uh, we're going to have creator insights on uh, the consequences of transgressions. This is really a continuation of the conversation we had last week. The theme is overall is karma and the repercussions of karma. But this is um, maybe a little bit more of a look on, on the consequences as opposed to generating it. Uh, but it's... It's interesting conversation to continue, but it's very important too. We got to continue this. Yes, and karma is an extremely important um, force of nature. It's a law of the universe. It's encapsulated in the common saying, "What goes around comes around." But it's much more profound than that, and it's really a creation of our own, which is kind of strange. It, this is an outside system that monitors what we do. But it's our energy that comes back around and its consequences, either magnified or attenuated in some way or resolved if we've created a dilemma in some way. So your good deeds come back as blessings and rewards. The bad things you do, the mistakes, even the self-abuse with your own thoughts can come back to you as a worsening of your life in some way. And so we'll, we'll talk about the kinds of things that get us in trouble. Because it's important to know. Absolutely. Well, as always, we have a lot of material, so we might as well get on with it. <laughs> you asked Creator, one of the surprising things we've learned from Creator about karma is that karma results from trauma and that the neutralizing and healing of that trauma is the purpose of karma. A sensitive soul risks greater wounding, greater trauma, and hence greater karma as a result And, of course, the perpetrator incurs karma in a way that is easy to grasp. So even an ostensibly nonviolent soul, but one that is too easily wounded, can be a threat to the success of the human experiment, just as the overt perpetrator is. Is discussing karma a form of blaming the victim, something that has become a rather powerful taboo of late? Can creator comment? All right, and as a channeler of creator of all that is, this is the answer that came forth when we did this and recorded it. These are creator's words. Blaming the victim is a simplistic view of things here. It is imperative that humans develop a clear understanding of karma, its creation and consequences, and their role in this dynamic and the personal influences they will experience So they can live their life wisely and well and have karmic feedback more a blessing and positive guide and influence than a source of pain and suffering. This ideal is rarely met by anyone in today's world. Because of the sea of ignorance, people often do exactly the wrong thing to make karmic progress and end up worsening things for themselves rather than making an improvement. This is why the goal of living on a divine path is so very important. It will keep you from worsening things as the first and major benefit. Then it will allow you to do what is needed for healing in the most straightforward, least costly, and most convenient way, and allow you to take care of this karmic backlog and its imperative to receive attention and still have the possibility of a happy and productive life rather than to be mired in a series of seemingly insurmountable problems and perhaps only surmounting one to then be faced in rapid succession with another and perhaps a worse one. Many people live lives of serial circumstances of suffering in this exact way and it is because they have not developed effective strategies for coping, let alone surmounting, karmic obligations. This is a life skill that is a major objective of the divine human enterprise. There is no point in going through the trials and tribulations of living in a troubled and corrupt world with many would-be oppressors if, in the bargain, you fail to learn how to cope with such things and how they can be surmounted and to learn the ins and outs of the very tools needed and gain in the doing a mastery, and an expert level experience base and perspective. This is the value you will represent to the universe in having taken on this enterprise and gained the hard-won learning and how to navigate under the most extreme circumstances and difficulties. It will serve you well to have gone through this, but you are not finished yet. There is still much to do. 
This discussion will help prepare the way for the task at hand. To understand its importance, first of all, is a motivation to not simply surrender, even when things seem beyond one's reach and an impossibility to obtain. There is always a path that can be fruitful and successful in the end if one keeps going. This is the wisdom of engaging with the divine directly to receive such encouragement and guidance and how to bring this about. That is invaluable and can make all the difference. Knowing what is needed will provide clarity. Accepting the truth of the divine, that it is real and available and wanting to help, can be a tremendous encouragement and source of sustenance all along the journey. The many fine tunings and course corrections that might be needed will be simpler, come quicker, and be more likely to be successful ones when you are in divine alignment and receiving inner guidance seamlessly. This is the ideal and something to strive for, for your learning and growth. When you are in divine alignment and seeking the higher good, you cannot fail. You know, what's interesting about this channeling is that it's really directed at you, the individual. There's not the, the mention of uh, the overall consequences and that humanity is under right now at all. This is very specific to the individual in terms of why are you here, what life's all about, and what you're attempting to achieve. We also have the greater context of trying to save humanity, but that's actually not on topic here. Well, in a way it is. Because in a way it is, sure. It's going to be comprised of the efforts of all the individuals making up the cohort Right. Everyone has a say in the future destiny of humanity. They don't think about this every day. Right. They're involved with their own lives and so on. But they have some light they can shine. And that's why they're here. If they're not allied with the divine, they don't count. They're, they're a side issue and they're a spectator and likely a victim of all the negativity that will come their way. Because things are getting worse uh, in our world, and we need more divine support than ever. Yes, and basically what I'm probably saying here is that by working on your own problems, you are working on humanity's problems because you share your problems with all of humanity at the same time. And really what this is about is getting skills with uh, being in divine alignment is really a skill. You know, it's it's really a... um, an art of living task, something that you you need to pursue with actual focus and and really work at it as opposed to just being passive and marking time. Yes, I think that's exactly the point. Mm -hmm. All right, you ask creator, warriors are perhaps the most misunderstood citizens of the divine community, but they possess the capacity to stand strong more than other orientations. The hazard for them is losing their connection to love. Contrarily, service-oriented souls are brimming with energy but are frequently easily wounded and suffer great and burdensome karmic insult as a result. Creator's goal for the human seems to be fostering the fostering of self-managing beings who possess some of the warrior strength and capacity to stand strong while manifesting true love the way the service-oriented souls seem to do easily and naturally. It seems both orientations can learn a lot from each other about becoming wise. Can Creator comment? All right, and this is creator's words. This is a perceptive analysis, but only goes so deep. In actuality, what you are describing by the two mentalities are soul characteristics present within each and every human being. There are relative differences in degree of expression in the case of individual physical humans. There are always sufficient divine and altruistic inclinations to enable souls in a light being mode to do the right thing and to not make major errors of any kind. This is less so in the case of physical humans who are greatly impaired and their ability to connect to their soul and its expression heavily compromised. So one must make exceptions through a greater understanding that humans will be more faulty and may be heavily flawed. And this is why it is hard for people to understand the unconditional love of Creator for all humans, regardless of their history and their doings, good and bad. Even the most seemingly reprehensible criminal is our creation, 
And we know there is much more to that individual than is apparent from their life experience and expression. They are simply working under a handicap and being so disconnected from their larger aspect residing within the soul. So in striking the right balance, it is rarely achieved in an ideal way for most human individuals. There may be a mismatch inherently, but also the circumstances of an individual life And what is called for may be a mismatch to what potentials exist innately for that individual with respect to how tough and steadfast they might be versus being extraordinarily sensitive, but yet vulnerable and not tough enough to survive serious challenges that call for stern measures and a steady hand in spite of unpleasantness that might be encountered. The vagaries of life circumstances the karmic setup that is part of the soul purpose to work on from one's individual history, the environmental setting they are born into, and the family grouping, which may be far from ideal to have an untroubled life and to survive childhood as a strong, confident individual. These things are far from certain. Many will be at a serious disadvantage because of these prior circumstances and factors weighing heavily on them may completely throw them off track for an entire lifetime in which little is accomplished and perhaps much additional karmic damage results that must be healed in a subsequent incarnation or at least the attempt made. And this can become quite a long-term project and is true for most humans at this point because of the ravages of history they have lived through over and over again, often making little or no forward progress, but only encouraging more and more personal injury and personal negative karma that needs healing. So the deeper discussion here is this broad healing need and backlog that needs to be worked through. That will be the second order of business once the interlopers are attended to and receive enough healing through human request and cooperation by participating through prayer and healing efforts. And once that is attended to, the broader needs of the human family with the karmic backlog can be dealt with expeditiously and in earnest by everyone with a greater understanding of the necessity and the availability at long last of sufficient tools to accomplish significant healing progress through divine partnership with humans taking the lead as this will be necessary. I think this answer here is is really emphasizing the need for balance, which was, you know, part, I think, the prompting for the question to begin with. Um, you know, especially in today's society amongst young people, you hear the term snowflakes now, you know, and the need for safe spaces and all that. And, you know, to some extent, there needs to be balance. You know, yes, um, you can't go around, you know, victimizing people. On the other hand, there's a there's a hazard to being overly sensitive and not sticking up for yourself as well. Well, and it's a missed opportunity when you're unable to do that. It will compound the wounding you're already feeling that makes you feel diminished and really weakened in some way and unable to fight back, perhaps. And not that we're trying to foment uh, conflict or anything, far from it. But everyone needs to hold their own. Yes. And be able to stand up to someone who's bullying the person at times. And that can be a very powerful defensive strategy and a very effective one. Indeed. And we'll go over that some more. U.S. creator, corporations making harmful but habit-forming products like tobacco companies and breweries are traditionally safe haven stock investments that seem to always do well during recessions. Is there a karmic liability for investors in such companies? Are they complicit and have blood on their hands for the suffering caused by these companies? All right, and Creator tells us, and I quote, Unfortunately, this is very much the case. You cannot separate yourself from your actions and your energy. Even with only a few electronic transactions that put money to work through a stock purchase that gives a company more money to spend for its purposes and thus supports their growth and future success, 
if that results in harm to customers because the products being generated have a liability, anyone involved with the enterprise in a supportive fashion, including investors in stock who are very much once removed as they make no decisions at all about what the company might do or not, other than as an indirect contributor in purchasing shares, nonetheless have a karmic liability from the chain of events that ensues. They are involved subsequent to their stock purchase in the energy of all that happens. Karma sees the connection and will assign a consequence to them, commensurate with the role they play relative to others. In a large enterprise with perhaps thousands to millions of investors, the liability is spread among them proportionally And to be sure, a passive investor will have less culpability than an executive who may have been warned many years before of a health liability they are aiding to bring about and turn a blind eye with guilty knowledge of the harm that is developing and will greatly outweigh in karmic responsibility the passive investor of the organization who may be quite ignorant of the suffering. So here again, it will catch up to them eventually. So this is something to consider. Money is a form of energy. It makes things happen. And any energetic exchange has a karmic consequence, positive, negative, or neutral. So basically, if you invest heavily in a uh, tobacco company, for instance, um, you could potentially, if not in this lifetime, but in a future lifetime, um, get lung cancer or something similar, have some other kind of negative karma consequence. Um, it doesn't have to, you know, there, there, that, there could be that kind of causation instead of like directly smoking, for instance. Well, indeed, this is true. It is very, very true. And it doesn't mean that everyone is doomed. <laughs> That's not what we're <laughs> saying either. But these are factors. And the idea here is to run your life in a way you get less negative karma than positive karma. And that's what keeps the ship afloat. (laughs) So you keep going. You have a reasonable lifespan. But these, these questions come up all the time because most of our institutions are faulty. Most organizations are a mixed blessing. Look at the entertainment industry. Some of it is uplifting and helpful and positive and supportive. Some of it is dreadful and destructive. And now our technologies all have built into them liabilities. This new 5G rollout for electronic Wi-Fi and the the cell phone communications, it, it, it is harmful to human lifespan. But yet, it's being touted by investors. It's the greatest new thing. It's going to make a lot of millionaires, sure. But there'll be a karmic liability. So this is just an example to wake up, learn, and be aware. And we've learned that ignorance is no excuse. So if you buy into all the the noise that top 5G is the greatest thing since sliced bread and invest accordingly, the fact that you didn't know that there were hazards is, is, is on you. You know, the ignorance is not an excuse. Um, and that's true of life in general. We, we've heard that from Creator more than once. Yes, it's, it's much like the legal system. Yeah. You know, you're, <laughs> the laws are the laws. <laughs> and if you break them, you break them. And if you say, well, gee, I just wasn't thinking or I didn't know there was that regulation or whatever, that won't save you. It will be <laughs> swept away entirely as an argument. Well, what can save you is Lightworker Healing Protocol, and you can check out the Lightworker Healing Protocol with our downloaded ebook at uh, getwisdom.com slash LHP, and prayer can be another thing that really saves the day for you on these implications, so you want to know how to do that most effectively, you can do that by getting our, our, our prayer ebook and download that at getwisdom.com slash prayer. We'll be right back with more discussions of the consequences of transgressions when we return with more Get Wisdom. Welcome back to the second segment of Get Wisdom. We're talking about creator insights on the consequences of transgressions. Uh, continuing our conversation on that. Carl, you asked creator, we are currently in the grip of a dangerous pandemic with COVID-19. The choice of world leadership has largely been to sacrifice economic product- productivity in order to save lives. 
That is humanitarian for sure, but there will be huge suffering from economic hardship. Is that choice a better one karmically to achieve a lower death toll than with the ordinary flu season, when no economic restrictions from quarantine are, are, are ordered or tens of thousands of deaths are taken in stride? All right. Well, we get into some rather interesting information with this question. So here it goes. This is what Creator shares with us. In a sense, this is the ultimate of ironies, that a strategy of the interlopers seeking to cause a financial catastrophe by immobilizing human society through great fear of becoming personally infected and facing one's demise, ironically serves a greater humanitarian good to create preservation of life that otherwise would rise to a large death toll. We can tell you from the divine perspective There is no contest in terms of what is the higher ground. It is better for the world to become impoverished in exchange for the saving of suffering and the demise of many, many fellow human beings because that can be accomplished through a simple quarantine, however long it might require. The problem is one of practicality and the trade-offs involved and the level of human resolve and altruistic thinking that can be inspired. If this were a natural foe, through quarantine one could eventually achieve eradication. So the organism would eventually die out from having a lack of hosts to keep transferring it to new victims. And this would then be a successful conquering of the foe. But because the organism is unnatural and is being seeded deliberately into your environment, there is no possibility of winning through a quarantine strategy. As long as the interlopers want to see infections happening and suffering to continue, they will simply keep reintroducing it again and again and again. So this would turn into an exercise of self-sacrifice that would result in the annihilation of humanity, either through attrition from infection or impoverishment and eventual death through lack of resources, because people cannot be isolated and productive enough to sustain themselves and the greater society when no one can go to work. So this represents quite a dilemma. Theoretically, there can be a happy medium that is very practical. This is what you experience normally with the so-called flu season, that it is simply taken in stride and whether severe or mild is simply endured. And the attrition scene is an inevitable cost of doing business. The people will be at risk because the higher premium is not placed on conserving all humans' health and survival. That being the case, this does illustrate that a pragmatic approach that balances all of the risks and benefits would see a total inaction to achieve a quarantine that is total as not being a wise choice if such organisms keep appearing again and again and again. This illustrates that something is different about the current circumstances. That difference is death is being given a higher priority to avoid at all costs even in the face of serious economic downturn that will result from a lockdown of society across the globe. This is different because it is being created through mind control manipulation of the leadership, coupled with the installation of an inordinate great fear of this new virus in the general population to keep people compliant and accepting of governmental decrees that work and travel are forbidden no matter what the cost. That is simply not being thought about very deeply at all. This is wholly unnatural and is the hallmark of an extraterrestrial mind control manipulation to arrange such an occurrence with broad scale disregard of consequences in service to an idea or strategy of any kind. Humans normally do not operate in lockstep, in unison. It is only when there is a manipulation that people fall into line readily and do what is asked of them without complaint, with a high degree of compliance. This could change, and if questioned, 
would certainly be met with a counter strategy to begin producing disruptions, disunity, and that may well happen as a further way to cause harmful consequences. To have riots break out or widespread lawlessness with looting and property crimes and acts of violence to add more injury to the insult inflicted here. So to be sure, this is a fascinating real world example of moral choice. Brought to you courtesy of the interlopers, but with deeply contrasting motives and responses by the two parties, human and non-human and their widely divergent spiritual makeup. Yeah, you know, I <clears throat> I love that last line there. You know, this is a fascinating real-world example of moral choice brought to you courtesy of the interlopers. Well, yeah, I suppose it is fascinating, especially for somebody watching from outside the arena. But, uh, boy, it, it does create a really difficult situation for us. Well, and it's rather remarkable that this is just sort of chosen as a first uh, – strategy. And of course, there was a logic behind it, which was an overestimation of the initial wave of morbidity and mortality. The fear was it would overwhelm the hospitals, there'd be massive deaths and so on. And that's perceived as the motivation for why the governments were so draconian. But we're learning here, there's more to the story. The governments do what the extraterrestrials tell them. It's that simple. People don't like hearing this. I don't like saying it. But this is what we have to reiterate time and time again because this is the crux of the problem. Well, it's Um, our reality. And they they created this. This is from an extraterrestrial laboratory, not from human laboratory hands. It's also interesting. You know, this is not the flu either. Um, for one thing, real quick point before going to the next question, but, you know, the flu, once you get the flu, if you recover from the flu, it's gone. There's no flu left in your body. But we don't know about this virus still. We're not sure if you recover, if you have actually shattered or not, you know. Yeah, um, it has more liabilities. That is for sure. Yep. The question is, will we have any money to spend taking care of ourselves while they hit it? hit us with this again and again and again and again, which is possible. Yeah. yeah You've got to preserve a functioning society along the way here. And that's yeah. what's being collected. And that's purposeful. Because they you, want to weaken us financially. And they're they're succeeding. They are succeeding. And, and you know, the virus might kill you. Starvation will kill you. So. <laughs> U.S. creator, what are the karmic risks for voters and for people who do not vote in national elections, stemming from the actions of the leaders elected, especially in light of the fact people in power are so manipulated to do the bidding of the extraterrestrial alliance, despite their campaign promises? Okay, well, this is an interesting one and a controversial one for many, with so many differing views and perspectives. This is what creator says. One might think in a world that is corrupted, where even a well-meaning political candidate may completely fail to live up to expectations of their own, let alone what is promised to voters, that the karmic consequences for those voters will really not matter in terms of who they vote for or whether they vote at all. But we can tell you that there will still be a karmic assignment based on, first of all, whether one participates in carrying out the duties of citizenship to be a part of the outcome. If one is in a country where voting can make a difference as to the election of the leaders, all one can do is make a good faith effort to support what they might believe in about the suitability of a candidate, the practices and philosophy of their political party they represent, and any specific campaign promises for the betterment of the nation and society in general, because of the plans they have to change things, and so on. Looking at that and making a decision to support it with one's vote is putting karmic energy behind a positive intention. The fact it might be thwarted in the end through interference from the interlopers does not negate the karmic contribution of that intention. So that counts in the person's favor. The person who ignores their civic duty, thinking that it's not going to matter, they only have a single vote, it won't count, and since the system is so corrupt anyway, 
who one votes for really does not matter, and they may completely avoid participating as a form of protest against the system they see as corrupt. They are not free of karmic obligation for what the government brings about because they were refusing to act on one source of influence available to them. There are always some differences between the political parties and between candidates. There are varying susceptibilities to manipulation and influence, and this is what one hopes to see, that a political party expressing high ideals will want to live up to those ideals and put forth candidates sharing those views and represent an increased likelihood that more good will happen to benefit lives in general than narrow special interests, for example, of the wealthy. Such things do play out because even though the extraterrestrial alliance has a large measure of control of all that happens, this is not total and absolute in every particular. There are many things they simply don't care about and humans will. Therefore, Humans have more say about those activities. So things can be accomplished by people of goodwill acting through a good impulse if they are supported sufficiently by like-minded voters. To not make an attempt is a denial of responsibility and will have a karmic consequence of some kind. It is not the largest of transgressions, but this illustrates the fact karma sees everything and evaluates everything, and everything will have an influence that one does karmically. It will come back around. If one leaves a vacuum, something undone, that represents a lack on that individual's part, and they will suffer a lack of something that is commensurate with that failing to carry out their civic duty. You know, I've had conversations with people where they really recoil at the idea of having to, you know, step into the swamp and make a choice between the lesser of two evils, you know. And I can understand that aversion. And frankly, I went for probably a couple of decades myself without voting. Um, I only started voting again recently. Um, well, that's, so. that, that was true for me. I always felt I was making the choice of the lesser of evils. Yes. And really the best and most capable people have long been driven out of politics because of the level of corruption and this is a, this is all in the library and there's many books written by political figures who left the arena yeah and they wrote about it they they were bright-eyed bushy-tailed young they ran for congress they got elected then they got to washington And they were appalled at all that goes on. And they quit. They refused to run again. And they wrote books about it. So go check this out. We're we're not just coming out of left field here. There's there's a lot of work to be done to make the world better. And so this is my favorite metaphor, representing people who have a moral choice to make about the world they live in, that partnering with the divine is is sort of like voting for what's best yes or not voting if you do nothing and just praying to have a divine solution to raise up the harm doers the evil the influencers behind the scenes the interlopers that's the charge we have to solve this problem to heal the perpetrators first get that attended to, that's going to take a divine involvement. It will not happen unless we ask all those people out there who aren't doing anything spiritual or the ones who are misguided to think through the New Age movement they're doing spiritual work but really aren't because they're not addressing God or the Almighty or Allah. They're talking to light. They're talking to something that is a power they believe they have within themselves because they're light beings and so on. And it's really a self-deception and it's a deliberate disempowerment going on. 
So I don't mean to get on a, a <laughs> high horse here, but I do feel the the passion needed to motivate people. Yes. Because people don't know what to do. You know, and right now we're in this kind of helpless state that's being you know forced on us by the government. So maybe there's some time for reflection, at least. So well, we that's did ask, the spirit of my uh, entreaty here. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did. We did ask, uh, actually, fairly recently, uh, just in the last couple of shows, actually, the importance of actually addressing your request or your prayer to the divine, as opposed to just throwing it out there, you know. And uh, we learned that it makes all the difference, actually. You really need to intend for the prayer to be headed to creator in the divine realm. You know, it's it's not just, you just can't throw it out to the universe. It's exactly. It needs an address. <laughs> That's right. Because it's really not going to get delivered. It will be heard, but it can't be acted on because your intention is not in alignment with right. bringing in the true divine. Yes. And if you talk to New Agers, many of them, have turned away from the old ideas of religion and they've left God behind as a consequence. And they don't think that's important. They're not so sure there really is a being like that, well, many of them. But if they're not thinking of it, wanting it to be a part of them and all they do, they're on their own entirely and they have meager power at best. Yeah, and we've been told that the whole one of the big purposes of the divine human project itself is to foster a working partnership with Creator. And if you're not so, if you're not addressing your prayer work to Creator, you're missing out on the whole goal of the divine human project to begin with. Essentially, you know, yeah. so it makes sense that Creator's you know might hear it, but is not going to do anything as a result because that's really not the point. The point is to foster. And develop an actual working relationship with the divine. That's yeah, and, really what this is all about. And that's the purpose of this shift in consciousness as well. To bring back a unity of souls and perspectives. So they're working together in partnership with the divine. The true divine. The creator of all that is. Whatever you want to call it. And it doesn't care what you call it. As long as you reach out to it. Indeed. You can get some more insights on partnering with the divine with our uh, 10 Principles for Divine Living, which you can download at getwisdom.com slash 10, T-E-N. That's getwisdom.com slash 10, T-E-N. And we'll be back with some more creator insights on the consequences of transgressions right after this. Welcome back to the final segment of Get Wisdom, talking about the creator's insights on the consequences of transgressions. Now we're going to ask about one that um, well, is a little close to home for me. You know, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I I like a beer once in a while. You know, um, I've I've so I've been a social drinker my whole life. I've I've cut back quite a bit, but I can't say I've given it up entirely. But there are consequences to everything you do, and I'm learning more and more that this is a highly problematic area for sure. And we're going to ask about this right now. What about owning a bar? This is what you're asking, Creator. What about owning a bar? There must be negative karma involved with just simply owning the establishment, correct? If bars are really just a spirit attachment factory, is there any way to mitigate the negativity associated with it, specifically prayer work? If I have to say a prayer for every drink I serve, then so be it. Okay, well, this is someone who's feeling uneasy. (laughs) (laughs) You know, they've been complacent for many years. I (laughs) relate. Yeah. Well, and we come along and we teach that alcohol weakens your energy field and is a gateway to spirit possession for many, many people. So it's a destructive thing. And, of course, you have the things the mainstream realizes uh, all too painfully. There's a lot of alcoholism, a lot of people who are borderline whose lives are diminished. They may get along, but it's not what it could be, and it takes a toll on them. So there's... There are liabilities, potentially, not for every drinker. You know, the social drinking is harmless, and uh, it's a lubricant. People enjoy it. But it's it's the consequences that hurt. That's what brings negative karma back around to people. 
So this person wants to bargain, you know, let me say a prayer every time I serve a drink to somebody, you know, let cancel it and so on. Well, this is what Creator says about this question. It is correct that there is a karmic liability in promoting alcohol usage as a recreation, and that is because some people will be drawn into a habit-forming experience and have serious consequences. This can take quite a long time to develop, but if they spend some time in your establishment as a part of their early exposure, it will still be linked karmically to them and their dire outcome if it develops. Karma is absolute and relentless and will meet out responsibility in proportion to the contribution, active or passive, by anyone in the chain of events leading to a difficulty that causes harm. There are mitigating factors. Owning a bar is not as karmically negative as owning a criminal enterprise. So there are always degrees of negativity that are factored in. Using prayer as a countermeasure does not waive responsibility. It is a blessing for any recipient and is a karmically positive act of loving kindness. And that will generate positive karma for a bar owner or employee who wishes their customers well and prays for them. But that will be only one factor in play in terms of the overall karma. It will not take away all the negative aspects. To the extent it is self-serving, this will reduce the karmic blessings accordingly. So it is an unreliable strategy if the intention is to simply negate the negative karmic consequences that are a potential always with this kind of an operation. The same is true for any kind of self-destructive activity. If you have a liver problem and are a chronic drinker, You cannot simply say prayers to have healing for your liver and continue with your heavy alcohol use and expect the divine realm to keep you safe from the consequences. Human karma must always be allowed, and if it is a predominant negative factor, it cannot be overridden, even when prayers may be launched, unless there is truly a state of ignorance and someone is launching a prayer on their behalf through greater knowledge and wisdom. So what we are saying is, You are on a slippery slope here with much to think about. You know, an interesting question we'll have to run by creator. Maybe you already have. I don't know, Carl. But, you know, you can earn different kinds of karma within the same context so that, yes, you're you're enhancing the the risk for somebody that's engaging the activity. But a lot of bartenders are cheap psychologists, too. You know, there's a lot of really wise bartenders out there that, uh, that, that act in a very divine way when dealing with customers that are troubled and actually give them an ear to listen to, give them cogent advice. So you can earn both negative and positive karma within that context. And so my question would be, those two karmic earnings are not necessarily spent at the same time, though. You could probably exactly. reap the negative benefits in one lifetime and the positive benefits in another one. Exactly. And that's the piece people don't appreciate they're not addressing the same issues at all they're like right. separate compartments even so the fact you have some good things you've done isn't always going to erase a specific negative that specific negative has to be reconciled in some way and it's really because these things we're talking about like with this example they're polar opposites so they, they can't be used to neutralize. They're, they're going to play out in a different way, in a different setting. Each one of them, the good and the bad, it is kind of the takeaway message here. Yeah, interesting. You asked Creator, I have been cleaning up the environment around me the past 20 years, the past many years, and it continues today along the river where I live. I am baffled why people think it's okay to just throw their garbage everywhere. Why do they do it, and how can we change them? Is my initiative worthwhile, or am I simply enabling them to continue their wasteful ways and disrespect of nature? All right, and Creator tells us, this is not wasted effort, and you are not enabling those who litter. Such individuals are simply oblivious to the blight on the landscape they create through their thoughtless acts. 
So they will not notice that you or some mysterious figure is making improvements and thereby alert them or perhaps shame them into being more respectful. They simply give no thought to the consequences of discarding anything no longer wanted. They are insensitive to environmental beauty to a significant degree, and that is why they carry out such acts. They are not bothered by seeing trash from others that to many is a visible blight and quite disheartening. This is simply a symptom of the human condition. The people are quite beaten down by life and many sources of disparagement, all of which cause them to be increasingly disconnected from their divinity and the divine impulses that bring reminders of love, joy, and beauty in all things. So in a sense, it is a measure of divine alignment. Your act of generosity In restoring beauty is a blessing and an act of loving kindness that you can rightly feel pride about and know that Gaia and the rest of the human community who are still in divine alignment will recognize and be grateful. In a sense, everyone who looks at a beautiful river landing and sees the natural beauty, despite its proximity to human civilization, will have an inner thrill from a connection to the divine. It otherwise would be besmirched and perhaps short-circuited by seeing ugliness of trash present, but for your efforts at cleanup. That moment of love entering them will change them and will uplift and will in some small way alter their life trajectory. This will be repeated again and again and will be owing to you and your loving stewardship of the environment and will bring rewards in the future. Many will benefit from your actions, and while they may not know of you directly, nor your name, the love that it brings to them and they send back out in the world will flow to you at some point as well. So take heart. You are bringing the answer you seek through your own efforts, and that is in keeping with Creator's plan, that it is up to humans to save themselves, even from the thoughtlessness of others, including major acts of evil brought by interlopers. That as benefits the impulse you bring to bear here and your desire to improve the environment, if only to the human eye. It has benefits beyond a simple appreciation of an uncluttered environment for a brief time by an observer. When love flows, it does many things and will touch many hearts. In a sense, you're keeping the lifeblood of humanity going because it is fueled and carried by love as energy because that is the purpose of humanity to begin with. Anything that is non-divine slows the flow, so the impact is greater than it seems on the surface of your kindness. Well, that's encouraging because I've I've actually wondered about that question myself, you know, um, how, how much difference does it make to reach down and pick up a aberrant cup and toss it in the garbage you know so just cleaning up this making space for the next guy to come along and toss a cup <laughs> well there's big transgressions and small ones and there are big charitable acts and small ones but they all matter and they all add up you ask creator can creator share how the light worker healing protocol and prayer work can significantly help to mitigate the karmic risk we all took in choosing to incarnate at this time all right The creator tells us, given the size of the problems you face, the legacy of the huge span of time, you've largely suffered life after life after life, incurring such huge karmic wounding with little awareness of how to fix it. There is now a huge backlog of unmet healing need. That is why so many suffer in so many ways today. Not only are you still under the boot heel of the interlopers, holding down humanity and its progress, All new wounds are simply adding on to a huge catalog of prior insults and injuries that have heretofore received little attention and create a tremendous obstacle to present progress and future liberation. This must be attended to. It must be addressed. It must be healed. And however that is brought about, little by little or large chunks at a time, that will depend on your knowledge and awareness of the problem, as well as your knowledge and awareness of what tools you can use in order to be successful. If you use inadequate tools, you will fail. If you fail to engage with the problem, you will fail simply through inaction. 
your problems will worsen over time because this is the nature of negative karma. The penalty increases with neglect. So there's no time to lose and every reason in the world to engage the problem with the correct tools and give it your all. Those tools are empowering prayer and the Lightworker Healing Protocol, which is a comprehensive series of high-level informed prayer requests to enlist divine help to accomplish the divine level deep healing that is sorely needed for humanity to recover from all that has been done to it through the ages. This will require a massive healing enterprise taking place across time domains to go back to address the wrongdoing of history in many times and places for many, many participants, both perpetrator and victim alike. That is a divine level problem to see to. It cannot be done by humans directly. When that is accomplished, the vast learning of all that has transpired, the good, the bad, and the ugly, will provide a fount of wisdom that will serve through all of time as the greatest of achievements on record because it will be the description of the greatest problem ever faced and how it came to be solved through growth, learning, and divine aspirations by a group of divine human volunteers putting themselves at risk to serve the greater good and win the day. Well, that's what we're all about, Carl, is uh, helping to foster and build that group of divine human volunteers. Uh, We need a lot more of them. And really, that's the bottom line of this project is to build that cohort. Well, and it's not hard to do. We can show you exactly how to go about it, give you the words to use. And all you need to do is couple those words with a little heartfelt intention, which isn't so hard because it's all positive, uplifting things. You know, helping and healing others is one of the most blessings, greatest blessings you can give to yourself because there's no higher calling than to help someone who is struggling and suffering. And the best way to do that is with prayer work on LHP. You can get our prayer book again, getwisdom.com slash prayer. And we are out of time, Carl. Thanks again for everything. All right. Be well.